Hello my workies fam! Welcome to my channel, my name is Mia and this is my work here. Today we're gonna go over Figma Basics 101 tutorial for beginners. And we're gonna start with Figma features, Figma the environment, everything you need to know before start using it. I'm gonna get you familiar with it. I'm gonna get you started on it. And this is gonna be a six part video. And we're gonna go over all of different Figma features. We're gonna design websites together. We're gonna design mobile apps together. We're gonna prototype them. We're gonna auto layout them. We're gonna do everything. So this is gonna be super beginner friendly. This is for you if you want to start Figma today. Let's go! This is how it looks. You can actually download this from their website. I'm gonna link it down in the description or you could use the web app version, which is not really different and it really doesn't matter which one you wanna use. It's just that I'm more comfortable with the app itself. So we have the Figma environment here. We have all of your teams, different teams that you're gonna be working on, shared projects with you if you have favorited a website, anything like that. These teams you can actually create yourself. You can just create a new team. Figma is actually free for students. So if you're a student in the university, you can get the free version. You can update some of your teams that you want to work with. And it's really good. It's really helpful for students. So let's just dive in in the main app. So as you can see, I have different kind of teams here. I'm just going to hop on in my team. I have different projects here. They're listed. You have FigJump templates. We're not going to work with those right now. I'm just gonna click on a new design file. It doesn't matter how you want to do it. You can do it from here. You can do it from here. I just did it with here so it would open a new file in my team. As you can see, I created a new file here. I'm just gonna get in. I'm gonna explain all of these different features, all of the things you could use here. You should know before starting, you can always hit here and go to Figma community, explore new files, find different apps, different stuff that you wanna work with. You can see there's a lot of different platforms here for you to build on, use, learn from. So just remember that, but we're gonna jump on that on the next video. So here I have a new file, it's entitled, I'm gonna name it YouTube and ta-da you've just named it so starting from the basics this is your canvas this is where you can get everything done and then this is your layer list this is your assets list i haven't linked any libraries here so you can't see anything yet but i'm going to teach you that too you can easily change the background of this page if you wanted to i'm going to stay with white right now and this is a new figma feature local variables i haven't created any yet so we're not going to get there and we're just going to stay here in the environment so as you can see you have the mouse you have the scale how can you use scale well scale would let you like make objects bigger and smaller without owning their ratio so for example i'm gonna say hi here and i'm gonna add this on top and then i'm gonna group it so if i just do this you see it messes up the ratio this works well but in some cases where you've designed an actual frame using this would be really helpful for you because all the objects inside will change sizes as well and it's really good but we're gonna jump on that later first you need to create a frame and here as you can see it has listed all different sizes that you might need so i'm just gonna hit mm, this size because this is the size i mainly use now i want to change the background because i can see anything so here is our frame this is where you get started on this is where you put your designs in this is all the shapes you have rectangle you have arrows everything's here i want you to pause this video go ahead test all this out and then come back so it's really simple you have all these different shapes here that you could use and it's really helpful for you in your design layer and then you have the pen tool which is really good because if you are skilled and you can actually create cool vectors, you can do it here in Figma. It's not really advanced, but it gets the job done if you want to doodle something real quick. And then we have the text, which is there. 
you have all your different plugins here, different components here, different plugins here, and your different widgets. So uh, we're gonna get to that later. And you have comments here as well. So whenever you put a design and you wanna mention something out, you can just add a comment easily. So this was the main features here. We have create a component. So when you create a button, you create a card, you can component it for later. And we have the mask tool here and we're not gonna use that yet because it's not uh, relevant for us now, but just for you guys to have an idea. Let's create two shapes here and it's really easy. You have two shapes here. You just select both of them and you can just mask it or you can use this to union section, subtract anything. I'm just gonna subtract so you guys can see here. See, it's, it's really cool. Later on in your uh, design creations, this could be super helpful for you. So I'm just gonna delete that up, yes. And go to the side menu here. So you, here there are different things that you could use. New design file, new fig jam file, new from sketch file. These are not relevant right now. You're not gonna need it. If you ever wanted to save a local copy here, how you can get it. You can see version history, which is actually really helpful because you can go back to a version before and see what was happening. This is a really cool feature. I really like this. And then coming down, we have export and export frames to PDF. So if you wanted to do a presentation, you can easily do that as well. On edit, not anything that you cannot do here in the canvas itself. On view, this is important. You want to turn on your pixel grid. So when you zoom in and you want to be pixel perfect, you have all these pixel things to care about. And then you have layout grids. So you have layout grids that you can turn on and off. And then I don't use that as well, but something that you really want to turn on is going to be rulers. So if you add those, you can always add rulers in your design. And these are really helpful to stay in, in the right grid. So I would turn on the rulers for when I wanted to start working. And then we have pixel preview, mask outline, all of the different things here. Show hide UI. If you ever saw yourself losing everything, you probably click this and now your UI is going to be gone. You can just simply uh, hold down command and slash to bring it back. So we have all the different things here. Zoom in, zoom out. These are relevant. You can do them on your keyboard. And then object, all of this again, some things you can do with shortcuts. You can convert to a frame, you can frame a selection, you can use as a mask, you can group it. So these are all different shortcuts that you can learn or do from here. Again, text, sear, bold, italic, under, and this is again irrelevant because whenever you write something here, there's gonna be something panel here that you can use and just change everything into your likings. We're gonna get to that too. And then we have arrange, align to left, align horizontal align right align top these are really helpful i would suggest you to learn these because sometimes it's just easier to do a shortcut tidy up and all of these are here as you can see here you can actually use them not having to go there or use the shortcuts and then we have let's say plugins again we had there as well it's not relevant you want to turn on all of this snap to geometry snap to object snap to pixel grid so you wouldn't have a lot of decimals that aren't useful in your design and like you have to clean up later so you're gonna have a highlights layer on hover on you're gonna turn all of these different things on because it's important the water and then you can change the keyboard layout and you can change notch amount i always change notch amount because it's important and i want every notch to be eight pixel i want every notch to be eight pixels so small notch is one big notch is eight pixel how does that help you so let's say i want to push this eight pixels to the right i just have to hold down shift and the right button on my keyboard and it goes eight pixels as you can see or i can do just one so yeah that's good and then after you change the notch amount guess you're gonna be ready just keep that in mind that you can find keyboard shortcuts here and you can learn any one of these that you would find helpful for yourself this is the basic layout of figma there are these different things here on the top which are again irrelevant because they're down here as well so no need to worry about it i'm gonna bring out a design of mine to work on this a little bit 
I bringed out one thing that I designed from before here just to show you the right menu in here. Let's say you created a frame, you added all these different icons, text. We're gonna get to that. Don't stress it out. I just wanna show here. So you can actually change colors of your components in this section, which is fill. You can add stroke and all these different things. I'm gonna add this here so you guys can just see it. So let's say I added, created this rectangle. I can easily change the fill here to any color that I want. I can add an image, which is pretty cool. I could even add a video, which is again, really helpful for presentations. So I'm just gonna create, like add a color right now and maybe show you guys how to create gradients. So this is how you can create gradients. You can just choose a linear gradient, which would look like this or you could choose a radial which would be from the middle as you can see you can have angular which is something like this you should have a lot more colors for this to look really pretty then you could have diamond which would be a diamond in the middle and it's really pretty so this is playing out with the fields you can add a stroke i'm going to change this to this so we can easily see it. you can add a stroke here so it would cover around the edges you can make this stroke bigger you can keep it on the inside you can keep it on the outside you can center align it so i mainly do outside actually i mainly do inside and then you can change the color of the stroke you can add gradients and everything else that you could add in the fill section something really cool is that you could have only top stroke you could only have left stroke and you could even custom it to like any of the directions that you would want and then you could actually edit this to be dash instead of a single line you could custom it it's really cool you can do a lot of different things with it and let's say you want to give this a curve so you're going to come here to corner radius and give this a little curve like 60 pixels so this is really cool you could actually click here and change like i don't want uh, my top right side to have any curves so i'm just gonna do that you see it's pretty cool you can have corner smoothing which i'm gonna show you the effect of so if you smooth your corners it's gonna be way more smoother you see it's just gonna take over these nudges here and just make them super smooth you always go with ios it's pretty awesome and then going downwards you can have effects which are inner shadow and uh, these are good for giving depth to some design of yours you should have to just have to play with it to make it like super cool you can add drop shadow which are the shadows that you can pull out underneath your design so i'm just gonna do this i'm gonna go with this color just to play around and this is it you see it's pretty cool it's awesome you could even give your design background blur let's add a new rectangle on top of this let's take all this out let's make it white and you can actually make opposite lower with this and change this to background blur so when you change this to background blur it's gonna blur everything behind it like this so it's really good for creating glass effects which again we're gonna get to you can create layer blur as well which would be good or creating different like cute blurs on your designs like this one's here these all are created with layer blur as you can see and then this is mainly i think and you can obviously export everything you can export as png jpeg svg pdf and if you wanted more data you could just switch on the dev mode and see everything from here it's really cool it's just it has everything you can add plugins to it and just make it super easier and more smooth so that will be it for this section and then you could actually share your files from this part i'm gonna change this to anyone with the link can view and i'm just gonna, gonna copy the link here if you ever wanted anyone to not see your files and like you just want people who are invited to see it you can just easily change this to only people invited to this file if you want people to not have access to copy 
duplicate anything from your file you just have to turn off actually as you can see or if you want people to be able to do that you're gonna turn this on this is gonna be mainly it for the first episode we got familiar with all of the different figma features how they work what are they useful for and then on the next episode we're gonna come back and we're gonna start designing with all of these different features we're gonna have the next video for wednesday i guess so till then just get in figma use these different tools play around with it get familiar so you could follow up in wednesday video and start designing with me next episode from that is gonna be auto layouting next episode after that it's gonna be prototyping and we're gonna probably have a bonus uh, design system video as well so i hope you enjoyed this video and let's get back to mia with a face and that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe leave a comment like this video let me know what you think follow me on social media hit me up if you needed anything if you had any questions i'm gonna be answering my directs in instagram and yes stay tuned for the next videos we're gonna go over all of the different figma features and everything we can do there one by one and this is again a super beginner friendly course it's a crash course See you in the next video. Bye!